Uh, welcome to the witnesses. It's good to see all of you again. Thank you for your good work. Um, as everyone on this panel knows, uh, the International Space Station has been a big priority of mine for a long time. And not only is it a critical tool for projecting American leadership in space, something all the more important with the Chinese successfully putting the core module of their space station up in April of this year. Uh, but we've also invested over $100 billion in it. And to be fiscally responsible and prudent, we need to get maximum use out of that investment. Uh, multiple times, the Senate has taken up legislation I've introduced to extend the ISS through 2030. Uh, the extension through 2030 was part of the NASA Authorization Act, which the Senate, Senate passed unanimously at the end of last year. Uh, it was also part uh, of that same NASA Authorization Act that was included this year in the U.S. Innovation and Competition Act, which was passed by the Senate in May. Uh, and so, and it's something that the current administrator, Senator Nelson, uh, strongly supports as well. Uh, and so both the current administrator and the prior administrator, we worked together on this extension it is common sense. It is bipartisan. We're waiting on the House to act. Uh, and we will see if and when the House does act. But at least on the Senate side, uh, it is 100 to nothing that this extension makes sense. Uh, and I'll mention to the chairman, so there were battles in the prior administration because there were a few misguided voices in the Trump administration that wanted to retire the ISS early. And uh, Senator Nelson and I on this subcommittee uh, took turns taking a two by four to, to, the, to the administration on that question. And it only took about 300 to nothing votes for them to realize that, that perhaps their position was not going to prevail in the Senate. Um, but we need to see the House Act. Uh, let me ask the witnesses, look, I think we're going to get the extension done in one vehicle or another. Uh, it's the right thing to do. It's long overdue. But, but given the experience of the panel, I'm curious, technologically, from a safety perspective, what is keeping the station from lasting longer than 2030, from lasting through 2035 or 2040? Uh, there's a lot of expertise on this panel, and so what's, what's your collective judgment on that question? I'll go ahead and start. Uh, first of all, uh, Senator, um, the wounds from the two by four um, have, have recovered quite nicely. And I think you're to, to, to be clear, Jim, you, you were not the one advocating this. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm aware of that, but I was I was part of the administration. Um, and look, here's the thing. I think what we're seeing now is that um, that the foresight that you had at the time was right, because we are not ready for what comes after the International Space. We're not ready for it. Building a space station takes a long time. Um, especially when you're doing it in a way that's never been done before, which in the future will be commercial. I don't, I don't foresee Congress appropriating funds for a second international space station. I don't foresee that. Now, that being said, here's the thing that I think is important. Extending it to 2030, I know the Senate's already passed that, and I support that. Um, I would also tell you that there's no guarantee we're going to make it to 2030. Um, certainly, we should if, if we can. We have seen already a crack on the International Space Station. We have seen a hole on the International Space Station. Um, the, if you look at the outside of the space station, it's been you know, pelted by debris. Um, and of course, there's, there's always modifications, upgrades that have to happen in order to keep it you know, moving forward. Um, so it, it, is, it, is a, it is a marvel of engineering. <laughs> Mike Gold used to tell me quite frequently, we need to put it in for a Nobel Peace Prize, which I think is right. Um, it, is, it is a tool of diplomacy. It's, a, it's, it's been just a phenomenal capability for our country all around, not, not even considering how much science is coming from it right now. Um, so the, the key is extending it. Yes, there is a challenge. Um, we know it can't last forever. How far can it last? I don't, I don't think we, we have that answer. Um, Right now, I think it's, it, we're in great shape. Um, well, and let me ask a related question, which is what do, what do y'all think is the timing for a replacement of comparable capability? Uh, and, and 
when is that tr transition realistically possible and how do we ensure that, that, that the ISS is operational, that we don't cede lo low Earth orbit uh, for a period of time to the Chinese, that we maintain U.S. leadership continuously there? So the, the future is going to depend on how much it gets funded. <laughs> right now, it has been funded um, at nothing compared to what it needs. I think it was like $15 million or something like that uh, for the transition to a new commercial you know, space station. But what we need, and, and the, the CGS appropriations bill had $101 million, which met the president's budget request, uh, that coming from the Senate. Um, the Senate had $101 million in there to meet the present budget request, which is fantastic. But I'm telling you, sir, it is still not enough. Um, when, when we think about how long it takes to develop a space station, especially a way that's not been done before, I don't know how long. I'm not going to give you an answer on the date that that. But here's what, here's what I think the Senate should do. The sh Senate should absolutely declare that NASA needs to tell it when it's going to, what is the objective to have that new space station. And then the Senate needs to fund the requirements to achieve that. Um, it, I don't think the right answer is to continue, first of all, extending the space station is the right thing to do, but continuing that in perpetuity, believing that it's going to last forever, I think is not the right approach. And I'm not suggesting that's what the right. Senate is doing at all. Um, but N NASA needs to say, you know, here's, here's how we're going to replace it. Here's what it's going to cost. They need to put that in the president's budget request with many years, you know, you know five-year outlook, and then, and then come to you and say, we, this is the money that we need. And right now, I don't see that happening the way it should happen. And that begins with, a, I think, NASA needs to completely fulfill the spirit of what was written into the 2017 NASA Transition Authorization Act, having to do with the transition plan. Um, and a transition plan needs to have, you know, timing, milestones, clear objectives, how those objectives are going to be met. Um, and then once that's in place, then you can begin to have a conversation about follow-ons. So, as you know, Axiom, because we've, you know, we've spoken to you about this, um, Axiom's approach, uh, you know, was funded on a competitively awarded um, uh, agreement that was negotiated with NASA. And that $101 million that Jim is talking about, when you look at how NASA is planning to allocate it, does not meet the commitment to Axiom for 2022. The work that needs to go to work on the space station side of it. In other words, for the station to do the analysis that's needed in order to be able to, ha to ensure that Axiom can reach orbit and dock by 2024 is not funded completely in that, in that amount, let alone looking at the, the creation of dual path you know, for having maybe more an alternative to it. So I would agree, um, definitely more funding is needed, but also NASA needs to be clear about objectives and the means that it sees at this point, understanding that any transition plan is going to be a stake in the sand at the moment. It's going to have to be iterated upon. But it needs to be much clearer about what those objectives and milestones are. So, Senator, I don't know if I can enter this into the record, but I borrowed my son's ISS folder for today's <laughs> testimony. I'm such a fan. Um, we talk about a lot of recycling on Earth. And I can tell you that's even more important on orbit. As you pointed out, and again, I appreciate your support and your two by four that kept us going you know, during some difficult times. We need to squeeze every minute an ounce of capability out of the ISS. And in terms of when we should be retiring it, I mean, again, I'm a recovering attorney, but you know, the engineers tell me there's seals that will wear out, et cetera, but there's still going to be good hardware. And we should look at, Yes, maybe there is a point of retirement, but continuing to leverage the hardware that we can continue to use as part of another system or as part of a smaller system. And as we discussed uh, before you arrived, you know, at Redwire Space, we're the global leader in microgravity research, development, and manufacturing, the only company to actually build things on the ISS. And we're looking at a future with biotech and organs, et cetera, that you can build. We cannot cede those technological capabilities or the diplomatic or political benefits of low Earth orbit to China. So we need to have a two-pronged approach. One, extend the ISS to 2030, which I included in my written remarks, and then ensure that we proceed with enough funding and capability to deploy a free-flying commercial space station so that it's operational while the ISS is still there and we do not create a gap in low Earth orbit that would be disastrous for us in the nation. And as you point out, you have fans at NASA in doing that. You know, Senator Nelson, Administrator Nelson has been a great supporter. And we've talked a lot about the need for an authorization bill. Uh, you former staff that was working on that authorization bill that's now over at NASA. So I think you've got great allies at the agency.